Prima Media's Mining Weekly Online is talking to Jeffrey Christian, the managing director of the New York-based CPM Group. Jeffrey, we write a lot about the looming hydrogen age. And in South Africa, we like to link that to fuel cells because mm -hmm. they are platinum using. How do you see the hydrogen age panning out? Well, you know, hydrogen energy has been like uh, science fiction since after World War II. People have uh, dreamed of being able to replace it, uh, oil and natural gas with hydrogen, but the technology's not been there. I mean, there's three big limitations. One is the cost of producing hydrogen, which has changed radically in the last five years with the rise of uh, off-peak solar, nuclear, and wind power. Uh, generation as well as hydroelectric power uh, generation capacity. But the the real limitations have been the safety issues of shipping, storing, and distributing hydrogen and the costs because of those safety issues. And with the rise of liquid organic hydrogen carriers, and Amplatz is doing some work with Hydrogenius, we're working with a company uh, in the United States, uh, in, in China, and in South Africa. Uh, so with the rise of advancements in liquid organic hydrogen carriers, that radically changes the safety issues of shipping, storing, and distributing hydrogen, and therefore the costs. And all of a sudden, it's competitive with you know uh, gasoline at, or petrol at four dollars a gallon or you know a, a dollar a liter. So now all of a sudden you can say, okay, this is good, and you also avoid all of the infrastructure. So hydrogen energy all of a sudden looks better. Fuel cells still have a lot of technical problems. And also you're seeing a reduction and even the elimination in some applications of platinum in those fuel cells. So I'm not sure that fuel cells and liquid organic hydrogen carriers uh, are the saviors of, of the platinum industry. And I'm not sure that fuel cells are the future motive power, but I do see a rise in and a move toward hydrogen. I mean, if you go back to 2006, 2007, 2008, when oil prices were going from $10 to $140 and then back to $90. <laughs> uh, but if you go to that period when that price was rising, there was a lot of talk about hydrogen, moving to a hydrogen economy uh, because it's cleaner and, and, and you avoid some of the political issues related to petroleum production and distribution. But the cost structure and the safety issues, you know, sort of, killed that, that, that focus on hydrogen for a while. The research has continued quietly, and now we've jumped through some hoops, and all of a sudden it looks like it could happen. So do you see hydrogen as being transportable, tradable, and a, a possible or set to replace oil as we know it? And what are the implications of that? Well, the implications are amazing. And in fact, the, a lot of the people, like the people we're talking, working with uh, on the liquid organic hydrogen carriers, they try not to focus on it because it could be so radical in terms of transforming the energy market. You know, we used to use whale oil as our major source of energy, whale oil, wood, and peat. And then we shifted to coal, and then we shifted to petroleum and natural gas. And it would be one of those major economic transformations to go from petroleum and natural gas to hydrogen. It would have an enormous effect on the energy market, and a lot of the energy companies, you know, Exxon, Total, um, Shell, are all looking at hydrogen uh, as a future energy source because they want to be part of the future as well as the present. But it also would change the economic structure of the global economy, and it would also change the political structure because all of a sudden, certain places that are important to the world because of their petroleum reserves and resources wouldn't be important to the world. And we look at our sunshine and our prime wind <laughs> and we say to ourselves, well, we have the potential to create clean hydrogen. Mm -hmm. We can take it from the Northern Cape, solar power and wind power, uh, or even closer to the port that we're looking at of Kocha, use seawater mm -hmm. and actually generate a emission, a clean, a green yeah. hydrogen and already some of the countries like Japan are starting to look at that. Do you see that as being important, that the way hydrogen is produced is going to be a big factor to make it clean? I said, you know, the, the, the production of hydrogen has changed radically in the last five years. And what I was referring to was the rise of solar and wind power. Here, 
in Europe, in China, in North America, all over the world, you're uh, seeing a tremendous growth of solar and wind power. And a lot of that power is generated in off-peak hours. So the question is, how do you store it? And in Japan has used liquid organic hydrogen carriers to store energy generated by off-peak nuclear power for years. They use a carbazol, uh, which isn't suitable for motive transportation, but for a stationary site storage of energy. Uh, and they'll, they'll take the excess power, they'll electrolyze water, they'll store the hydrogen, and then when they need e extra power, they will oxidize the hydrogen and use that uh, to generate steam, which turns turbines and generates electricity. So that technology is there proven. And what's really been happening is with the cost reductions and the increased uh, installations of wind power and solar power, all of a sudden this is true. We're working in China and what we're working, one of the companies we're talking to is the, world, the, the country's largest uh, electricity generator. It's all hydropower. And again, you have this tremendous capacity to generate electricity on an off-peak basis, and you're just wasting it right now if you, if you actually bother to make it, so you just don't make it. And you can take that off-peak generating capacity, I electrolyze water, uh, store the hydrogen, and then you transport it with the LOHCs, and you can use it in fuel cells, you can use it in any number of applications. That was Crema Media's Mining Weekly Online talking to Jeffrey Christian the managing director of the New York-based CPM Group.